KJ Sports with Mike Fink. The State College Boys Volleyball team won two of its three matches yesterday to advance to the state semifinals. Quite an achievement, but the boys had no time to celebrate. They were back on the court at 10 a.m. this morning for the semis. They won that match to advance to the state championship for the first time in school history. The finals just five hours after the semis. Pensbury, the opponent, the Lions get right to work on defense. Trevor Stark denies Pensbury one of his 14 blocks. And then on set point, more defense. State comes up with the double block. They win seven of the last eight points to take the opening set. They're all fired up and for good reason. Set two, the Lions go to their money maker, Chris Rose with a big right hand from the back row. Rose with 24 kills in the match. And then later in set two, State going back up the middle. Stark with the easy put away. State College cruises to its first ever state championship in boys volleyball. They win it three sets to one. The final leg of the Triple Crown going down today just outside of New York. The Belmont Stakes lacking its usual luster this year. The Kentucky Derby winner and the Preakness winner both sitting this one out. And top jockey Calvin Burrell also on the bench. Trainer Nick Zito and his horse Icebox, the pre-race 9-5 to five favorite. But Icebox was left melting in the back on a hot day and wound up finishing ninth in the 12-horse field. First due, the runner-up in the Preakness led for most of the race, including right here down the backstretch. However, check out Drosselmeyer and jockey Mike Smith. They blow right by first due en route to capturing the Belmont Stakes. Not bad for a horse that didn't even run in the first two Triple Crown races. Smith ends an 0-for-12 streak at the Belmont, and trainer Bill Mott wins his first Triple Crown race. When I got the phone call and Bill said that asked if we'd be interested in riding him, I, I mean, the first thing I thought of was I'm going to win the Belmont. I, I really did. I mean, I've, I felt that from, the, from that phone call on all the way to this morning. I, I felt like I got up and ran four miles this morning. I felt so good. I had to kind of take the edge off a little bit. <laughs> so it, it, it means everything to my career. I, I feel complete, you know. The Philadelphia Flyers have once again dug out of an early series hole. Philly won its second straight last night to even up its Stanley Cup final series against the Blackhawks at two games each. Chicago made things interesting with three, two late or two late third period goals to pull within 4-3, but Jeff Carter sealed the deal with an empty netter with 24 seconds left. The Flyers improved to 9-1 at home in the playoffs, but Sunday night's Game 5 is back in the Windy City. The boys realize now is not the time to relax. It's obviously it's got a little bit chippier out there, a little rougher, and you know a lot of a lot of talking, and, and I don't expect you know much is going to change. We're going back to Chicago. We have to win a game there eventually, so you know we're we're this is going to be the most important game for us. We got to go into Chicago and, and give this the same effort, and you know, hopefully get the same results. The series is uh, is wide open now. It's even. We get to go home. We got to take advantage of home ice. We played well there all year, and uh, as we progress in this playoffs as well. Uh, I just know that momentum is an important thing for us to grab early at home, and uh, I still think we've got to be smart, disciplined, and, uh, and make them play defense. Time to talk baseball. Padres starter John Garland carrying a six-game winning streak into tonight's matchup with the Phillies, but don't expect Philly to be intimidated. He's 0-3 with an ERA of more than eight against the Phils in his career. Garland had a lead early, but Ryan Howard changes that. He hits a rocket to the gap in left center in the third. Both runners on base cruise around to score. 3-2 Philly. Fast forward to the fifth. Jason Wirth hits what appears to be a normal fly ball. But 20 mile an hour wins tonight in Philadelphia. And this ball just keeps carrying and carrying. And goodbye. Pad the stats there, buddy. 6-2 at that point. More than enough for Jamie Moyer. The 47-year-old picks up a complete game victory after allowing just two runs. Moyer becomes just the third pitcher to win 100 games after turning 40. That guy is a freak of nature. The Pirates playing host to the Giants, third inning. Ryan Domit steps up, and wham! Man, does he have a sweet swing. Domit with his sixth homer of the year. He finished with four RBI in the night, four zip bucks at that point. Andrew McCutcheon with a big night, too. He picked up four hits, including this homer, his seventh long ball of the year. McCutcheon now hitting 320 on the year. Pittsburgh led five zip, but things get dicey in the ninth. Former Bucko Freddie Sanchez up is the winning run, and uh oh, Lastings Millage, not the greatest left fielder, but a great catch there. Saves the day. The Pirates win 6 3. Down on the farm, the curve lose to the New Hampshire Fisher Cats 5 3. The Altoona bullpen coughed up a three zip lead. Curve outfielder Alex Presley went two for four to raise his league leading batting average to 370. The two teams play the rubber game of a three game set. 
tomorrow afternoon. The Pitt football team picked up its fourth verbal commitment for the class of 2011 today. Linebacker Quinton Alston shows the Panthers over Wisconsin, West Virginia, Iowa, and others. The 6'1", 218-pounder projects as an inside linebacker in college. Scout.com lists him as a three-star prospect. We end the day, actually not the end of the day, the second to last story of the day is on the clay. A little history at Roland Garros, Francesca Schiavone up against Samantha Stoser in the French Open final first set. Schiavone with the ace. She took the opener 6-4. Second set ends up in a tiebreaker. Check out the cross-court volley from Schiavone. Great touch there. That sets up championship point four, and she can feel it all fired up on championship point. Stoser can't get a clean swing on the backhand. Schiavone becomes the first Italian woman to win a Grand Slam tennis tournament. Ricky Fowler introduced himself to area golf fans with back-to-back -back victories just down the road at Sunny Hand Amateur in 2007 and 2008. A couple years later, the guy has become a household name, not just in Johnstown, but all over the country. He's putting on a show at the Memorial Tournament this weekend. The beautiful approach shot here on number nine. The only thing more beautiful than that is the guy's wardrobe. Ricky going with the all blue get up today. You'll see it right there. I'm a big fan. Angie, what do you think? It's a good look. It's a good look. He's your leader at 16 under. Ricky Barnes isn't ready to hand the trophy to him just yet, though. Check this out. He jars it from the fairway on the 11th hole. That's good for Eagle Barnes with a career best round of 62. He's two shots, or three shots, shot off Fowler's lead. So tomorrow, maybe I'll try that. All blue get up. Yeah, I like that. Bright blue. I guess I, I want to see Brian and green over there. Brian and green, and I'll go all blue. <laughs> I think we got to go to the Salvation Army or something to find coats like that. <laughs> maybe we can try that tomorrow.